Hello, hello, hello. Thought I would uh, use three hellos this morning. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you're having a good day. As you can see, we'll be starting at about 36 seconds. Um, just doing a few final checks here to make sure everything is working correctly. Um, always a good idea to make sure things are working when you are doing a live lesson. Looks like everything's working. We'll start in about 16 seconds. Yes, there we go. A lesson on color. I think it will be a very exciting lesson. Um, a very colorful lesson actually. So, we'll see. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this live English lesson where I'm going to talk about color. It's a very cool world that we live in. A very colorful world. So, welcome to this live lesson uh, about color. Um, sorry, I'm off my mark here because uh, I just got distracted by something outside. Should I start again? Let me start again. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson about color. We live in a very colorful world. When you look around you, you see things like green leaves on the trees. You see things like the yellow sun or the blue sky. But this lesson is not going to be a lesson about the basic colors. This isn't a lesson where I'm going to teach you the word for uh red and yellow and blue and green. I'm expecting that you know all of those things already. This is a little bit more of an advanced lesson and you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. This lesson on color uh will be a lesson where you will learn some English words and phrases uh to be able to talk about color in a more advanced way because we live in a colorful world. We have made up a lot of words and phrases that we could use to talk about color. So, let's get this lesson started. Before we do though, a few things. First of all, Dave, thank you for being here. You should know, Dave, that Todd is not able to make it this morning. So, Dave, you are on your own. You will have to fly solo moderating the chat but thank you for being here and doing that. Uh I do wanna say hi to O Philosopho Mickey Mode Eggs. American English with this guy is here. Uh it's Thanksgiving weekend in the United States. So, I'm imagining that's why Brent isn't at work today. Maria C is here. Ricardo is here. Mary Mary Lemon Cute Apple the Frog. Ricardo. I think I said Ricardo twice now. When I scroll back, I know Key Park is here. Norma is here. So, many regulars here to learn a little bit more about color. Freddie Wolf, I saw his name too. Anyways, a few things before we get started. Do keep the chat rolling along with good English conversations. If you have a question about the topic, please use the form that will be shared to ask it. If you ask it in the chat, I won't answer it. I like to keep things nice and orderly and uh this lesson will probably take about 45 minutes to about 50 minutes. This isn't a super long lesson today but anyways, should we get started? I think we should. So, when you talk about color, you're actually talking about light. So, color is made either by something that emits light like the sun emits light uh or something that reflects light or refracts light. Reflecting light is when the light hits something and bounces off. My understanding is that refracting is when light goes through something and the direction of the light can change. So, I don't know a lot about light. Um this isn't a a, a scientific lesson on color but what I will say is that um there is a spectrum, a visible spectrum of colors a visible or what we also call an optical spectrum. You'll notice it goes from violet to red. Violet is another word for purple and you can also find this in two forms. Sometimes the red is on the right. Sometimes the red is on the left depending on how you're talking about those colors and the light that produces them. By the way, if you go past violet, you get into ultraviolet and if you go past red, you get into infrared. So, there you go. The visible spectrum of light is what gives us the colors that we can see. You'll probably be familiar with a rainbow. A rainbow is a phenomenon, a natural phenomenon whereby light is broken up. White light is broken up into its different wavelengths and then we see those colors. 
A rainbow is a very cool thing to see. It happens when light goes through raindrops and that light is then broken up and you can see each individual color in the rainbow. Um there is a little bit of a um a myth around rainbows that there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that if you could get to the end of the rainbow where it touches the ground, you would see all those beautiful colors and then there would be a pot of gold there. But it's kind of impossible because the closer you get to a rainbow, the more those that rainbow of colors moves away from you. You can't actually get to the end of the rainbow. We have something called a prism which is something made out of glass or other clear material and what a prism does is when light goes into a prism, it does the same thing as what the raindrop is doing. The light refracts and it separates into its individual colors or scientifically, its wavelengths. So, you'll see here there is a prism. A uh, very famous rock band made an album that had this on the cover. If you can guess in the chat, um I'll give you a cookie. No, sorry. There's no there's no prize for guessing that one. But a prism is a really cool um like a, a an object made out of glass or acrylic or another transparent material in the shape of a triangle. When light goes through, it breaks up into its individual colors or individual wavelengths. We have something called a color palette. So, a color palette can mean a couple of different things. The most common use is in the world of design. If you decided you wanted a web page made, you would go to a design company and they would say, what's your color palette? And you would tell them what colors you normally use when you design things. You'll notice on my YouTube channel, I use white and orange and black. So, my color palette is very, very limited. If you look at a Google logo though, you'll see that they use almost all the colors in the rainbow. So, they have a very broad color palette. So, when you design something like a web page, you can even use a color palette to design a room in a house. You might paint one wall one color and another wall a different color and you might buy curtains that are another color and all of the colors work together. So, you choose a color palette where the colors look really, really cool together. I see Stacy in the chat saying it's Pink Floyd. There we go. There's something called a color wheel as well. A color wheel is something used in design to help choose colors. The color wheel has colors in the same order as the visible spectrum and it allows you to choose colors that are close to each other on the color wheel or opposite each other depending on how you're trying to design something. So, if I wanted to design something with you know two different shades of purple, I could use violet and red violet. If I wanted a couple different shades of orange, I could use red orange and orange. So, you'll see here the color wheel shows you two different kinds of colors, warm colors and cool colors. I should pause and let you know one thing. You'll notice that I spell color with the letter U but in some situations, you will see it without the U. In Canada, we spell color with the letter U. In the United States, they spell color with no U. Canadians tend to use both versions of it. The most correct version for us has a U in it but we when we see color without a U, without a U, it doesn't bother us too much unless I'm grading a student paper. Then I put a little red X there and mark it as a, a spelling mistake. We also have something called a paint swatch. When you are deciding to paint a room in your house, maybe you don't like the current color. You painted it 10 years ago when that color was in fashion, when that color was very um cool and everybody was using it and now maybe you've decided to repaint a room. You would go to a hardware store and ask for some paint swatches. Paint swatches show you all the different um versions or variations of different colors. So, you would take that home and maybe hold it up to the wall and then decide on which color from the paint swatch you think would work the best. Um sometimes though, when you pick a color from the paint swatch and then when you actually paint the whole room in that color, it can look a little bit different because that's just the nature of light and color. Sometimes a color from a paint swatch 
when you put it on the whole wall, it looks just a little bit different. So, we have um two different ways to describe colors. We have primary colors. So, generally, um the primary colors are considered to be red, yellow and blue. Now, that has changed a little bit because of computers. You'll hear terms like RGB monitor which stands for red, green, blue but I think that's because the technology limited their ability to create yellow. So, generally, the primary colors are considered to be red, yellow and blue and what do you think happens when you mix primary colors? You get secondary colors. So, you'll see the same drawing here where the red and yellow mix together, you get orange. Where the red and blue mix together, you get purple and where the blue and yellow mix together, you get green. I hope I said that all right. If not, you can see the chart beside me uh and you can see how uh primary colors when mixed together will make secondary colors. We also have words like tinge or hint or touch. So, someone might paint the wall in their house white but it might have a tinge of blue in it. It might have a hint of blue in it. It might have a touch of blue in it. Someone might buy a white t-shirt and then after they wash it with other clothes like a brand new pair of blue jeans, it might end up having a tinge of blue or a hint of blue in it because the dye from the jeans went into the t-shirt. So, a tinge or hint or touch is when you talk about usually the color white but when you can see a little bit of another color in it. By the way, I'm going to talk about black and white as colors. There's a big argument in the world whether black is a color or just the complete absence of color or whether white is a color or if it's just all the colors mixed together. I call black and white colors uh, at least for this English lesson I'm going to. Um let me actually back up. Not back up. Let me jump over to do some questions. Let's do a few questions and then we'll move on with the lesson. Let me get my question form up here. Let me do a sound check for a sec. Everything's running great by the way. Um there we go. Yes. Let me get from Ruslan the first question. Hello, the best teacher Bob. What is the most popular car color in Canada and which is your favorite? You know, the other day We pulled into a parking lot and the vast majority of cars were white. It totally surprised me because I thought um to me a white car is kind of a boring looking car but I think white is a very very popular color right now. Um I don't know if it's the most uh popular but in my opinion it seems like um it is probably the most common color right now. Um and which is your favorite one? I like red vehicles. My one van is red. Red's not my favorite color though. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um let's see here. From Renata. Hi, Bob. I hope you're well. I like to think my English is advanced but I don't know what to ask about today's topic. I'll be watching the lesson attentively. Thank you. Well, thanks for leaving a little message anyways. Renata, good to have you here. Um Henry says, hi, teacher Bob. What's your favorite color for cars? My favorite one is maroon. Thanks a lot. I do like red. A long time ago, I had a red pickup truck and it I think is still one of my favorite vehicles and then I had a red minivan and then I bought another red minivan and then I bought another red minivan. I'm on my third red minivan in the last 30 years or so. Uh let's see here. Mode says, Hi, rosy-cheeked Mr. Bob. Do you see life through rose-colored glasses? Nice Canadian spelling of colored. I love that. Will it make you see red if I ask whether you've ever painted the town red? Maybe when you were younger. Uh no, I never really painted the town red. I I've never been someone to go out on the town all night and and celebrate into the wee hours of the morning. Um and anyways, rose-colored glasses are when you th- see everything in life in a positive light um and if you see red, it means you're angry. So, um no mode. I'm not going to see red but uh nice nice spelling of color. I like that. Um lolly lolly bonjour Bob. What is your what's your favorite color to wear? Blue, I guessed. Merci. Yes, blue is not my favorite color but it is my favorite color to wear. I generally wear some kind of shirt with some blue in it when I'm working. I do have t-shirts that are black 
I have t-shirts that are red and orange um but I usually when I am dressing up to go to work or to make a YouTube video, I wear blue. Azam, hi best teacher. Why is Canada's flag red? By the way, it's very beautiful. Regards. I'm not sure. I actually don't know why it's red although in the fall, there are certain types of maple trees where the leaves turn a bright red in the fall. So, it's possible that's why it's red but I will have to figure out why. I don't actually know. Let's see here. Ah, here we go. Lemon. Hi, Bob. Have a great day. Can you tell me the difference between color without a U and color with a U or are they just synonyms? So, color with a U is how we spell it in Canada. Color without a U is how our American cousins spell it. So, that is the difference between the two. Um let's see here. I'm clicking the wrong button. Layla, is there are there any phrasal verbs? Little fix there with the word color or the colors themselves. There are probably some phrases with colors in them. I can't like we have green with envy or um let me see here like to see red like Mode had in his comment um but I don't know of any phrasal verbs that would have it. There's definitely a lot of idioms um with with that uh with color and color words in them. Um Yaroslav says, morning the wisest teacher Bob. I am taking the IELTS exam in three weeks. Tell a few advanced color words. Thanks. Take care. Well, this lesson is full of them, Yaroslav. Uh, hopefully, they are helpful for you and I wish you all the best. I love hearing when one of my viewers is going to take an English test. I hope you do well. I hope you do well on all parts of it. So, best uh best wishes on that, Yaroslav. I hope you do great. Let's see here. Ty says, hello, teacher Bob. I have a question. What color do you see when you close your eyes? It's black for me. Thanks for your answer. Have a great day. So, for me right now, I see like reddish pink. Um I think because I have a lot of lights pointing at me right now, that's the color that I see. If I squeeze my eyes really tight, I see black. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Makes me feel a little strange. Uh let's see here. Ario says, color reminds me of English time education DVD for kids. My late papa bought it for me to learn English about colors. You can check English time on YouTube channels now. Color, the colors are usually one of the first things you learn when you're learning a language. Usually, you learn things like how to say hello. You learn your colors. You learn your days of the week. You learn the months of the year. Those are all very common things to learn when you start learning a language. So, that's cool, Ario. Uh, Cool that you can watch it on YouTube now a little bit and remember fondly. Uh let's see here. Natalia. Hello, Bob. Please tell us about the shades of gray. It seems to me that you are well versed in this as this is your favorite color for dressing. Thank you. So, there are a lot of shades of gray. Now, by the way, shades of gray is the title of a book with many scandalous scenes in it. I have not read it but just be careful. It's uh it's not uh, it's definitely not uh the kind of book I would read. But let's talk about the color gray. There are colors of gray like I have a little bit of silver gray in my hair. This is more of a charcoal gray. If you look up on the internet um names for shades of gray, you will find a lot of them. I know we painted a room gray and I think it was a sterling gray. So, sterling is another word for like a silver gray. Uh but yes, definitely there are a number of words for gray. Um let's see here. Next question. Can you make a sentence with iridescent? <laughs> this is not a common word for me but I think it came up a while ago. Showing luminous colors. Okay. So, the starfish was very iridescent. You know when you have an aquarium and the fish swim under the lights and they're the scales on the fish reflect light and in a really cool way. That would be uh, iridescent. Very cool. Next question from Eric. Sir, may we know what is your eye color? I'm gonna add a we there. Sir, may we know what is your eye color? So, my eye color, we would probably describe as blue green. Um how zoomed in can I go? So, my eye color is not green and not blue but if I wear blue shirts, my eyes usually look somewhat green 
when I wear green shirts, my eyes look a little, sorry, when I wear blue shirts, my eyes look somewhat blue. When I wear green shirts, they look a little bit green. So, my eye color is definitely blue green, we would say. Uh let me do a couple more and we'll get back to the lesson. Um this is from the P <laughs> the philosopher Mickey. Uh Mr. Bob, how are things? So, my question today is have you ever seen the northern lights, Aurora Borealis? I'm sure it must be such an experience with colors up there. So, the northern lights, it's this beautiful display of colors in the night sky. You do need to go quite far north to see them. I have seen them here where I live once or twice when I was a kid but I have not seen them in a very long time. You do need to go fairly far north to see them. Um but yeah, it's like this curtain of blue and green uh shimmering light. It's a very very cool colors and very cool thing to see. Uh let's see here. I'm Betty. Uh dark orange or light orange? I think like right in the middle orange. Like not dark but not light. That's that's the color that I do like. Um let me see here. Let's get back to the lesson. Let's do that. So, you can describe colors in a lot of different ways. You can say that um oh, that person wears a lot of dark colors or he usually buys cars that are a dark color. A dark color would be any of these kinds of colors. Colors like a dark blue or a dark gray or a dark brown. So, when you add the word dark, you mean you know kind of this somber dark look I guess is what I wanted to say. They're not black but they're certainly not very colorful or bright, okay? So, you can have a dark red or a dark green. Um when I buy a van, I usually get a normal red but I could buy a dark red van if I wanted to. So, that would be red that's a little less red with a little more black in it. Hopefully, that made sense. We also have bright colors. Some people like to dress in dark colors. Some people like to dress in bright colors. They buy things that are maybe neon or things that are reflective or things where the colors themselves are just very, very bright. You can see the orange and the yellow and the green and the blue in here. They're just giving off lots of color. It's very, very bright. It's the opposite of dark, okay? These are definitely not dark colors here. These are definitely bright colors. We also have the word vibrant. When something is vibrant, it means it has a mix of colors and it's very similar to bright. You could almost use these words interchangeably like he always wears very vibrant colors. Lots of bright blue and bright yellow and bright pink. So, I'm actually using the word bright to talk about vibrant but definitely um sometimes people dress in different ways and some people like wearing very bright or vibrant colors and some people prefer dark colors. We also would call these muted tones, okay? When some when you mute the sound, you can't hear it. You can also use that word to talk about these colors. You could say they're muted tones and some people uh, like dull colors or sometimes if you look here at night, as the sun goes down, it becomes harder to see the colors around you and we would say that there's very dull colors. You can see here these buildings are kind of a brown, a little bit of gray. Um there's just nothing popping out. So, we would certainly describe that as um there are a lot of dull colors. Like oh, that part of town's not very nice. All the buildings are painted with really dull colors. They're just just not interesting. And we have the word colorful. So, this parrot is colorful. Um when someone dresses in a colorful way or when I do a lesson like this, this is a very colorful lesson. It means you're going to see a lot of different colors, okay? Um a lot of people right now are decorating outside of their houses for Christmas and they put up a lot of lights and it's a very colorful display of lights. There is definitely um probably in about two weeks, there will be more but if you drive around right now, uh it's a very colorful trip around the neighborhood. There are a lot of Christmas lights, a lot of colorful Christmas lights. So, there are a lot of different ways to make things colorful. Um paint is probably the most common. I'm not sure when paint was invented but if you don't like the color of a room, you can paint it. If you don't like the color of your car, you can paint it. So, paint works as a verb and as a noun. 
I'm going to buy paint because I want to paint my car. So, there I used it as a noun. I'm going to buy paint because I want to paint my car. In order to paint, you need things like paint and you need a paintbrush and other things but certainly um painting is one of the quickest ways and cheapest ways to make something look good again. If you have a room in your house and you don't like the way it looks, the cheapest and best thing you could do is to put on a fresh coat of paint. So, a fresh coat of paint is a phrase uh that we use to talk about painting something. You might walk into a room and say, wow, this room needs a fresh coat of paint. If it's been like 20 years since the room's been painted, maybe the paint is flaking off the wall and the colors have become kind of dull. So, I'm using the word dull there. You might say, hey, we should pick out a bright color because this room needs a fresh coat of paint. We need to liven it up a bit with a fresh coat of paint. And then there's also something called matching colors. So, people sometimes just wear clothes that are colorful but sometimes they wear clothes where they've specifically chosen the colors so that they match. In Canada in the winter, people very often will have a scarf, a winter hat which we call a toque and a pair of gloves where the colors all match. They will purposefully buy them to be all the same color. Sometimes that color is black. Remember, I said I was gonna say black is a color. So, I myself actually have a gray winter hat and I have gray winter gloves. I actually bought new ones. They say Canada on them. I should wear them someday. But it is very common for people not just in uh countries where there's winter but it's very common for people uh to buy clothing where the colors match. Um, and uh, definitely in winter in Canada, you will see a lot of people walking around wearing things that match where the colors match. Sometimes in order to organize things, you will color code things. When something is color coded, it means that you've chosen different colors to mean different things. Most of you, I think, would have done this when you were students or maybe you're doing it now as a student. Maybe you have a binder with papers in it and you have a divider and red means science class and green means French class or English class and yellow means uh science class. We as human beings love to organize and one of the best ways to organize is to color code things. My sister actually works in an office at a hospital and they keep all of everyone's health records and they are color coded. So, when they look at the wall, they can see I think blue is people age 65 and older and then green is people from age 50 to 64. So, they have everything color coded so that very quickly they can see and pick out what they need to do. Um you can see here this binder, it has marketing, promotion, sales, territories, goals. So, this is for a business and in each of those color coded sections, you would put though that information and the colors just help you very quickly see it or find it, sorry. Everyone usually has a favorite color. Maybe I shouldn't say everyone has a favorite color. Most people have a favorite color. My favorite color is orange which might seem strange because I wear blue a lot but if I was to, if someone said, Bob, what's your favorite color? I would say my favorite color is orange. My favorite color has been orange for a very, very long time. Um I picked the color orange when I was in grade school. Um when people were saying what their favorite color was, no one was saying orange so I picked orange. Um it's not because my parents came from Holland. By the way, orange is the color of most sports teams from Holland or from the Netherlands but uh, definitely my favorite color is orange. You should be ready to answer this question as an English learner. There are going to be times where you'll have a conversation. You'll be practicing your English and someone will say, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite season? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite kind of music? So, what is your favorite color? You should be ready to answer that and give a reason why. Um there's something called watercolors. So, when you um are someone who likes to paint, someone who likes to get a paintbrush and a canvas and use paint in order to paint, 
Sometimes you paint using watercolors. Let me make this bigger. Watercolors usually have a softer look to them. So, it's paint that you mix with water and then you paint on your canvas. So, a lot of times kids will do watercolor painting when they're learning how to paint in school because it's one of the easiest kinds of paint to use. The colors are not quite as bright as you might want them but it's very easy to clean up when you are done. Uh we also have something called food coloring. Um food coloring is something that you use to give food color. Sometimes food will naturally have a color. If you eat spinach, uh it is green. If you eat watermelon, it is pink. But sometimes in the cooking or baking process, they will add food coloring. When you buy a uh, cereal at the grocery store, it might have some food coloring in it to make it look a certain color. I'm not a big fan of food coloring. I would rather just eat my food uh when it's its normal color but humans like certain colors and so they have started to use food coloring or they started to use food coloring many years ago to give food different colors. And there's something in the world called dyes. Dyes are different things you can use to create color in something that doesn't have it. So, if you have a piece of fabric that's white, you can buy dye in order to change the color of the fabric. Dyes are made from all kinds of different things. Sometimes there's a natural source for the dye. Sometimes they've just found a chemical that will dye something a certain color. But when you have a white t-shirt, probably the most common type of dye is or dyeing is called tie dyeing where you tie the t-shirt in knots and then you dye different parts of it different colors and then when you uh untangle the t-shirt, it looks really cool. That was very popular in the early 70s or in the 1970s. People would tie dye their shirts. When something doesn't have color, we say that it's colorless. Water is colorless. It does not really have a color. You can see right through water. Um so, when something has a lot of color, it's colorful. When something is a specific color, you say it is that color. My tractor is green. My van is red. But when something has no color, you say it's colorless. You would say um air, I guess, is colorless. You can't actually see it. Water is colorless. So, when something has no color, when there's the complete absence of color, we would say that it is colorless. Hey, we're gonna jump over to members only questions if I can find the right button. As all of you know, for about 10 minutes in the middle of the lesson, um members get a chance to uh, ask questions directly in the chat. So, I'm turning that on right now. If you are, oops, if you are um not a member, do stick around. The lesson will continue in about five or ten minutes um and I will keep answering questions from the common queue but uh, right now if you are a member, you are totally welcome to ask questions. Let's go with Winter Wright with the first question. Hi, Bob. My favorite color is amber because I like the falling leaves and sunset. I would like to know what is the lucky color in Canada? There is no real lucky color in Canada. I know red is considered a lucky color in many countries in the world, in many cultures but in Canada, there's no to my knowledge, there's no real lucky color but I agree with you that amber color, that golden yellow, golden brown color that we have especially right now when the sun goes down in the fall, it's just beautiful outside. It is a very, very nice color. Uh let's see here. From the chat, Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. I hope you are doing well. Yes, the world is full of colors to avoid the red cross. I myself can be white with fear, red with shame, black with sadness, blue with cold, green with jealousy. Yes, we use colors to describe emotions and moods quite a bit but definitely, yes, the uh the world is full of color. Wanda. Hi, teacher Bob. How many years do you take or wait to paint your house? Thanks. Have a nice day. We usually paint a room in our house 
maybe every 10 years. I know some people paint their rooms a lot more often and some people don't repaint very often at all. But I think like we painted this room this past year and it hadn't been painted for about 12 or 13 years I think. So, I think for us it's about 10 years uh between times when we paint a room. And we usually repaint it because we want a different color. That's usually why. Uh let's see. Lolly lolly. My favorite colors are black and white. Nice. Mode eggs. Mr. Bob is so nice. He didn't wanna let the color orange down. <laughs> what a gentleman. Yeah, I felt bad for the color orange. So, um let me see here. Let me get another question on the screen here. Let's see. Rachel, do you think color impacts our mood? Hope you have a nice day. Well, certainly light impacts our mood. Like when I, if I do this, if I turn off my light, it's very dark when I do that, right? Um ooh, that's a little too bright. Don't worry, the camera will adjust. Um so, I think light affects mood. So, indirectly, I think color must affect mood as well. I think at school, our classrooms, we try to use fairly bright colors. We try to keep the walls, you know, some kind, it, they're usually white or off-white. When something's off-white, it has a tinge or a hint or a touch of another color in it. Um so, I think so. Um I think if you went into a room that was dark purple uh and didn't have very good light, you might feel differently than a room that's you know, a a little bit like a bright yellow or something like that with lots of natural light. Uh let's see here. Let me get back to the chat questions. Ricardo, teacher Bob, how are you? I'm good. My question is, I heard that the Canadian sky is gray the most part of the year. This is true. Not totally. It is quite gray in the late fall, in the winter and early spring. But for most of the spring, summer and fall, it's very, very nice here. Um but like today, it's just very gray outside. The sky is gray and that's pretty common um as we're in late fall and winter is approaching. Maria C. Hi, Bob. I was going to ask you about your favorite color but you've already answered it. Definitely orange. Mode eggs. So, your eyes change color just like trees. <laughs> is that a farmer's superpower or something? No, I think it's the power of color. Um, I actually think my eyes look a little bit green today for some reason. Um let's see here. Rod, the English teacher. My favorite colors are white, blue and black. All shades of blue I might say. Have a great one, Mr. Bob. Very cool. You know, it's cool that there's so many different shades as well, right? Like my shirt has different shades of blue in it. There's a little bit of white. We would probably call I can't, I'm having trouble pointing. We would probably call this aquamarine dark blue. So, it's cool that there's different shades. Thanks, Rod. Key Park, the two colors that Bob likes, blue and orange, are just contrasting color. They are. They're actually opposite each other on the color wheel. If you look at a color wheel, they're not definitely not beside each other. Uh Brent from American English with this guy. Maria C, what's your favorite color? By the way, Brent is doing a live stream. Just a sec. I have it up on the screen here. It's starting in 27 minutes and 55 seconds. Um let me just do one thing here. There, there's the link to Brent's live stream if you do wanna watch it starting in 27 seconds. Okay. Mode, what's the difference between dye and pigment? I think they're the same. I think a dye and a pigment, they're both something you use to change the color of something else. Um yeah, I think so. Maria, see, remember this isn't a science lesson though. So, there might be some difference that you'll have to look up. Maria C, when you talked about primary and secondary colors, it reminded me of the two years I studied graphic design. They taught them to us. It was very interesting seeing all the colors derived from those. It is cool to if you ever watch Bob Ross, he's a uh someone who long time ago had a show where he did painting. On his um I think it's called a palette, he would mix colors together. So, he would get a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red and then with his paintbrush, he would Uh, magically make new colors. It was very cool. Uh let's see here. Maria C says to Brent, violet is my favorite color and yours. Adi the tie. Hi, teacher Bob. Are the Canadian have the oh, do our politics, do our politicians or do our political parties have colors? Yes. The liberals are red. The new Democrat party is orange. The conservatives, the progressive conservatives are blue. They definitely have colors. 
Uh, let's see here. Stacy says, pink is my favorite color to wear. I also like beige and navy blue clothes but gray and dark yellowish green clothes are not my cup of tea. I prefer bright colors. Very cool. Stacy also says, orange is one of my favorite colors. It is because I like eating oranges. When I see orange color, it makes my mouth water. I would like to get my hair dyed orange. I've never had my hair dyed. Um, should I dye my hair orange someday? Some people when they get old dye their hair but I'm just um uh, I'm just silver gray. I'm just going to enjoy it. Mode says, I liked it when you squeezed your eyes. You reminded me of the thumbnail of Tuesday's video. I hope you didn't get a headache while making that thumbnail. I didn't. I made a few different thumbnails and that was the one we chose as a family to be the best one. Key Park. In English, we say hair turned gray and in my tongue, we say hair turns white. Yes, we will use white as well if the hair is actually closer to white but generally, we use gray. People's hair turns gray. Like, I'm getting a few gray hairs um but there are some people with where we would describe it as white but probably 99% of the time, we use the word gray. Um let's see here. Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. Some food colors are made with cochineal insects. Cochineal. When I think about it, I don't really want to eat anymore. Yeah, don't they grind up the shells or the exoskeleton to make different dyes? Fred says, ah, thanks for the shout out. No problem. Uh Mode Egg says, Mr. Bob, are you going to talk about color blindness? Yes. And someone asked about the phrasal verbs with colors. I can't think of something other than to black out. Yeah, that's true. To black out would be one. And you can also it's not a verb but you can describe driving in snow. Sometimes there's a white out. So, there's a noun to describe a situation where you can't see because there's so much snow. When you black out, it means you go unconscious. When you are driving and you're in a whiteout, it means there's so much snow that you can't see. Uh Brent says, I can never wear the color combination of blue and orange. It's the color scheme of a rival football team. My team actually plays them tomorrow. Album, Auburn University. Yes. Sports teams definitely have colors, don't they? Mode eggs. No, Mr. Bob. Orange hair reminds me of someone who is not very nice. Gotcha. Brent says, Maria C, I'm a fan of yellow. It's such a happy color. Yes, our kitchen used to be yellow but we repainted it to be more of a green. When it was yellow, it was a little bit too bright for us. Um let's see here. Freddie Wolf. My favorite color. Oops, color is green for the hopes we could do. Yes, green is a very um friendly color. It's the color of nature. I think it's the color of hope. It's very, very cool. Uh and then Modag says brownout. Yeah, so a brownout is when for us, a brownout is when the electricity is normally at 120 volts. If it goes below 105 or 100 volts, we call it a brownout and things start to flicker. Uh let's see here. Yellow is my second favorite color and color in is the only phrasal verb I can think of. Yes, to color in you know, the boxes. I think I'm going to talk about coloring in a bit. Let's do this. Let me get to my controls here and let me turn off members only chat. Go back to subscriber chat. There we go. That's done. Um and let me thank my members. Thank you so much for being members. Thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking that join button at some point and supporting me on this channel. Um I hope you enjoy having your name in green and a little crown. Um one last uh member. This is my first time to join in here. Very cool to have you here. Unfortunately, I don't know how to say your name but thank you. That's the very last member chat there. This is my first time to join in here. Very nice. Thank you for being a member and for chatting. Okay, back to the lesson. I think we should do that, shouldn't we? I should thank the 397 people watching. Thanks for watching. Uh we have just a few more slides and the lesson will be done. Black and white. So, when you take pictures, you can take pictures in color or you can take pictures in black and white. Um so, generally, when I take pictures, I take pictures in color. I like color photographs. Um uh black and white is when you take a picture and the only two colors present are black and white. So, you can see it adds this really cool look to it. A long time ago, when you watched television or went to a movie, the movie or a TV show was in black and white because they hadn't invented color yet. Um I used to have a black and white television when I was a kid 
there was color television available but a black and white television was cheaper and so my parents bought me a black and white television. Um I was happy when I eventually got a color television. Um so black and white would be any photograph or TV show where there is no color. That's how you would describe it. We have colors too that we call pastels. Right now in the flower world, people really like colors that we would call pastels. A pastel color is not very bright. It almost looks a bit like a watercolor. It's a little washed out. So, right now, people really like pastels like very light blues and light greens and light yellows and light pinks and light purples where there's just a little bit. It's more than a tinge. Okay? So, if you look at these blue shoes, there's more than just a hint of blue but there's not a lot of blue in it. They're kind of it's a mixture of blue and white. So, pastels, very interesting. When I eat um what are they called? Macarons. They're usually all different colors that are I would say are pastel colors. We also have something called infrared. Uh infrared is outside of the visible spectrum. It's outside of the optical spectrum past red and it's a way where if you have special equipment, you can actually see uh that non-visible light. So, I don't know a lot about infrared but sometimes I think they use infrared to see in the dark. Um remember this isn't a science lesson but uh I think that's what they use infrared for. It sees heat I think. We have something too where some people are colorblind. I am a tiny bit colorblind in the sense that black and dark blue look very similar to me. I can't really tell the difference between navy blue or dark blue and black. This is a test for color blindness. I see the number 74. Some of you might see a different number in this because you are a little bit color blind. Maybe your blues and greens look the same. There's all different versions of color blindness usually around uh two different colors that you see differently or you see as the same. Um sometimes in my computer class when we're doing design work, I will realize that a student is colorblind because when I see what they're making, the colors don't really match up and you can then usually I say, oh, um are you a little bit colorblind? You won't lose points uh in my class designing something if you are a little bit colorblind. We have something called paint by number. Let me make this a bit bigger. Sometimes people are really good at painting and then there's people like me that aren't. If I wanted to paint, I could buy something called paint by number and what that means is that there are different spots on the canvas and there will be a number there and if it says number 11, it I can check a chart and it says 11 um you know dark green and then I know that in that box, I have to paint dark green. So, it's something that kids do uh more than adults but definitely paint by number is something I remember doing as a kid. It was a lot of fun. Um it's a great way to do some painting if you're not good at painting. So, the number tells you what color to use. Also, when I was a kid, I had something called a coloring book. I had many coloring books actually and I would take my colored pencils or pencil crayons or crayons and I would color. I would color in the little boxes using Brent's phrasal verb there. So, when you color in the different spots, eventually you're done that page in the coloring book. There are now coloring books for older people. It can be very relaxing. I think this is actually an adult coloring book. A coloring book where um it's a little more intricate and more difficult than a children's book um but definitely uh when I was a kid, most of my coloring books were like Batman or Superman and those types of characters. Um every year, different companies announce the color of the year. So, every year, there's a new color announced and that's the color of the year. People use the color of the year to decide how to paint rooms in a house or a new building. They use it to decide what color flowers they want at a wedding. Sometimes people just ignore the color of the year but this year, um I think this is from Pantone. The color of the year for 2022 for the year coming up is October mist. 
it's not a very bright color. It's quite, it's a very dull color. Um, I'm not super excited for this. Um, I think that this might be a nice color uh, to paint an office if you're painting an office wall. It's not a nice color for wedding flowers but that is uh, the color of the year for 2022. We'll see what that means for flowers. Um, there is a phrase, one phrase I did think of with the word color in it and it's the phrase to pass with flying colors. When you take a test and if you get 97 out of 100 or 100 out of 100, we might say that you passed with flying colors. You didn't just succeed. You did really, really well on the test. So, we would say that you passed with flying colors. And we had this question a couple of times. Uh, people were asking about eye color. Everyone has, um, there's quite a variety of eye colors in the world. As I said, my eyes are kind of a blue green. Uh, Jen's eyes are a little more green. Um, one of my kids has brown eyes. One of my kids has the same color eyes as me. There are many, many different colors uh, of eye in the world um, and we refer to that as eye color. So, a lot of times like if you um, are when you go for your driver's license in Canada, uh, you have to specify what your eye color is when you fill out the application so that they can um, identify you if they need to. So, I always write blue. I don't write blue green but maybe I should. Anyways, eye color is the term you use to refer to the color of your eyes. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. Um it's 9 20 a.m. here. So, I'm gonna spend the next five, ten minutes just following up and answering questions. Let me get those on the screen. Um here we go. Nathan Kim. Hi, Bob. Can you tell me which kind of color makes you feel calm? Makes you feel calm. I'm gonna take the ING off. Thank you for the lesson. Um I think bright colors in the winter. We have something in Canada called a sunroom. Jen and I don't have a sunroom. A sunroom is a room on the south side of your house with lots of windows and many Canadians who can afford it build a sunroom so they can be in a bright room in the winter. So, I think it's not exactly a color but um when there's lots of light and bright colors um that makes me feel happy. What makes me feel calm though? I guess maybe I'm answering this wrong. I like it to be like not a lot of light at night. I find that very, very calming. If I'm watching TV, I usually only have one light on in the room. So, maybe I like darkness a little bit better. Um let's see here. What color is this or which color is this? What's the difference? Thank you. Yeah, they're both the same. So, I could say, look at this mug. Uh which color is it or what color is it? I would probably use the first one. What color is your car? What color is your tractor? Uh what? Yes, I would use the first one. I think the second one is fine but it sounded funny when I said it. So, definitely in everyday English where I live, you would say what color? Oh, I bought a new car. What color is it? That's what I would say. Uh let's see here. From Kuhn. Hi, Bob. I have a question. If I'm not mistaken, you like simple colors. I do. I don't like the like I like blue. I like orange. I don't like like maroon or any like blends of all the colors. Um let's see here. Apple the frog. What's your favorite color, Bob? Orange definitely. Orange for design and then uh blue for clothing. There we go. Sergey. Hello, Mr. Bob. Could you describe Canada using only colors? Well, That'd be challenging but I would say red because of our flag and then I would probably just use like green and brown. Like we have a lot of trees and it's a very green country in the summer but just this beautiful mix of fall colors in the fall. So, I guess red for the flag, green for the trees and then I would use the term fall colors to describe Canada. Fall colors are like the reds and browns and yellows and oranges of wind of fall leaves um as they change. Uh let's see here. Lika, hi teacher. You are a great person. Thank you for your job. Can you tell me what color is the most popular in Canada? What color are people wearing? Thanks. In the winter, Canadians generally tend to wear black, okay? I don't know why. Maybe because black absorbs sunlight 
but I have a black winter coat. Jen has a black winter coat. I have black winter boots. Many people will buy matching black winter scarves, black gloves, black winter hats. So, definitely black is a common non-color, common color uh, in the winter and the rest of the year, it's every color under the sun. Uh Freddie from France. Hi, Bob. Hope you are doing well. I am. There is a song Fade to Gray from the late 80s. Could you please explain the meaning of that? Thank you very much. So, fade to gray. Gray is considered like a very sad color like a um like when you're feeling blue or you're feeling like you it's just a gray day. Um so, when you fade to gray, it's like the colors in your life are leaving and you're and you're sad. That's probably what that lyric from that song means. I'm just guessing but uh definitely. Fox. Are foxes considered red or yellow? The foxes around here are like a reddish brown. So, when we talk about color, we can use the word ish as well. So, when something's red, it's red. When it's reddish, it's sort of red. I would say foxes are a mixture of red and brown and the way we would say that is reddish brown. I should have had a slide for that. So, my eyes are a bluish green. That's how you can say two colors together. Um his car is kind of a orangish yellow. So, it's not proper English but it's definitely very common. So, I would say foxes are reddish brown. That would be my description. Romeo. Hi, Bob. Tell us something about Black Friday and how it started. Well, it started in the United States as the first shopping day for the Christmas gift purchasing season. In the United States, it is Thanksgiving weekend. Many Americans had Thanksgiving dinner yesterday. They might still have it today or tomorrow or Sunday but it's kind of like Thursday is dinner with the family. Friday is the first shopping day kind of before Christmas. Um Brent might know more about that um but uh yes, today I guess is Black Friday. We have it in Canada too. There's lots of sales on right now. By the way, if you don't know what Black Friday is, it's a day where there are lots of things on sale at the mall, at stores, online because they're uh, encouraging people to start buying Christmas gifts. At least that's my understanding of it. Um shot of blue. Hello, Bob. When you say something like my true color, does it mean you're talking about your personality? You're talking about what you're truly like. Like I tend to show my true colors when I do a live stream. I'm not pretending to be something else. It's just me. This is what I'm like. Let's see. Dave says, hello there. Hope you are fine. The same difference that arrives to color and color happens with favorite and favorite. Definitely. And honor and honor. Um there's a few different words, Dave, where in Canada, we add an a you. Let's see. Ryan, what color do you think people like the most? I bet you the most popular color in the world is red. That's what I'm going to say. Steve, good morning, Mr. Bob and good afternoon from Ukraine. I'm really glad to watch the stream. I'm a painter. Thanks for this lesson. Have a nice day. Well, Steve, I hope you have a nice day as well. Stacy, can I say the person is colorless? I guess I could use it which means the person has no personality. No. You so, it's kind of funny because you can say that someone's very colorful. You know, he has a colorful personality but we wouldn't use colorless. Um you could. People would understand what you're what you mean but it's not common but you can say that someone's very colorful. That you can definitely say. Audie says, hi, teacher Bob. Is it the same or different between colorless and clear color? No, it's pretty much the same. If something is clear, we would say it's colorless, okay? So, if you say water, water is clear. You can see through it. We would then say that it is colorless. Um (laughs) Susie. Hi, Bob. This is the first time I study here. Thanks. My question is, if you mix milk and strawberries and pumpkin, what is the color you get? Well, you're gonna get kind of a mix between red and orange. So, it's gonna be a reddish orange or you could say like red orange. That's the color I think you would get. Um let's see here. Um Fyodor. Hello, Bob. In Russian, there's a special idiom meaning an unknown color. Gray, brown, crimson. Is there anything like this in English? No. I don't think there is. 
Uh, I'll have to think about that one, Fyodor. But that's interesting. So, you just say, ah, it's a gray, brown, crimson. So, you're basically saying it's kind of this color that's hard to describe, right? Let's see here. Jocelyn. Hello, Mr. Bob. I've heard idioms and phrases which give colors a meaning. I like the lilac. I like lilac color. Do you think it has also a meaning? Thanks a lot. No, but lilac is a beautiful color. It's a it's kind of a bluish purple lilac. It's a very light color um and uh it's definitely nice. Like there's a lavender blue and a lilac is more of a purple violet version of it. So, yes, definitely a beautiful color. Hey, I should thank the 441 people watching. If you're new here, there's a subscribe button there. You should click it and subscribe to this channel and I do wanna say thank you to everyone who watched today. We're wrapping this lesson up. Uh remember that. Let me just grab the link again. Oh, Brent starting in five minutes. If you want more English, if you want even more English, uh Brent's live lesson is starting in about five minutes. What does it say here? Five minutes. I can't go. Sorry, Brent. I gotta go to work but uh Brent is starting a live English lesson in about five minutes. Link is in the chat right now if you wanna go watch that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks to Eugene. Thanks to oh, Eugene says today is my daughter's birthday. Very cool. Thanks to Mode Eggs for being here. Lolly Lolly, Methry, Lemon, Ario, Franco, Key Park, Maria C, Wando, uh Wanda. Sorry, Wanda. Wanda Prado. Adi, Freddie Wolf uh and all of you. Maria C, Kaiseta, uh Lolly Lolly. I'm starting to say names twice. Tony, thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks, Dave, for uh flying solo today, doing all the work, doing all the heavy lifting. Thanks to Brent uh and Rod for being here as well. Uh Brent from American English with this guy and Rod from Rod the English teacher. Both have great YouTube channels. You should check them out as well. Uh anyways, I'm gonna roll. That means I'm going to get in my van and go to work. It is a work day for me. Remember, this lesson, this lesson on color will come out in a couple days in a shorter version. It'll be about 25 minutes long. I will remove all of the um user questions and it will just be a pure lesson about color. Do take the time to listen to it one or two more times. It's very good for your retention. You will remember more when you watch things more than once. So, look for that. Um put it on while you're cooking supper. Put it on while you're um I don't know painting your room. Maybe you're gonna choose a new color and paint a room. Do that. Anyways, have a good day everybody. Have a good Friday. Live stream tomorrow. It will be inside. It's far too cold and windy outside now but live stream tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you there.